If you want to know if a player is pressing a button, you have to use an input system. And in the year 2023, we have a lot of them. There are paid ones, free ones, and Please for the love of God don't use these ones. However, I am one of probably three people in this world left that is still using and actively making their own solution. Why? To answer that question will take us an entire video, which I don't feel like making right now, so let's instead talk about how I this to work with one. Recently I participated in Ludum Dare and I had to make a game in three days, so along with my friends we've made this. It's pretty much like Overcooked except that there is no resource management, there is no money, and there is no time limit. So basically it's boring. And right off the bat I was able to set up character movement and an interaction system. Well, garbage. After a lot of investigating, it turns out that my input system was being updated multiple times a frame. Why would that be an issue? Well, in my input system there are many types of key presses. When you start holding down a button, the key down event will fire for one frame, then the key will be marked as pressed until you will lift your finger. And whenever that happens, the key up event will fire also for a single frame. Because the system was being updated multiple times, the key down and key up events would have already been skipped when you decided to read the input. This was caused by faulty registration code. Whenever the game is running, I use its updates cycle for updating, but because my input system also works when the game isn't running, I switch to the editor's update cycle whenever that happens. Well, it turns out I forgot to unregister the system from the editor, that's the problem at hand. Well, it only took 10 minutes for me to waste one hour trying to fix this thing. Isn't that productive? Well, after that, I've continued working on the game without any problems and, surprisingly, without any Unity problems either. Every time I make a jump game, I use the newest long-term support version of Unity. And let me tell you, there is a reason I still use 2020 for most of my projects. Unity not compiling scripts, Unity crashing because it doesn't know a script exists, should not be capturing and there is a hot control, Microsoft copyright 2022, Control Z making the editor piss itself, and Pro Builder. Can someone please make something better? Why can't I still delete vertices? It's been three years! But surprisingly, since the whole iron source thing happened and the uh a few developers, Unity has been slowly starting to get more and more stable, which I really love to see because I cry every time I can use the fancy new features in Unity 5. Remember Unity 5? I do. I started at 4. It even had Windows XP support, holy garbage. Also, please stop saying the older versions of Unity cause performance issues. I literally have been using nothing but all of this junk and it's fine. Oh yeah, we're making a game or something. Our project was slowly coming together. I guess you patched enough we got to be a as true, yeah? Then the game completely stopped detecting settings because of this. Type of type. Bro. But then there was a problem. We realized we kinda didn't have enough time to finish this. Luckily there was this new and shiny category called extras. Uh extras ile jest czasu? Uh jeszcze trzy tygodnie. Oh kurwa! <laughs> so it was settled. This gave me time to work on other features, which aren't included in Cablebox yet. Cablebox being the name of the input system, because I wouldn't call it input system. That is dumb, why would you do that? And one of them was prompts. I wanted to have a bar at the bottom listing every available action, kinda like in Celeste. So how do we convert Cablebox key ID to an image? Oh, I know, by filling out a list for every single possible key! In the future, I would like to make a tool for automatically selecting images based on their naming, but yeah, we have prompts. And it only took a day to fill this thing out. I also check every frame what device was used last, so that in case you switch to a gamepad, the prompt will display the corresponding keys. And for all of you SCPSL, Gamers, I know that playing a game that actually runs well can hurt your little sensitive eyes. So I've added a special hidden setting just for you that will allow you to continue hitting your house with your PC. Perfection. However, there is one thing I didn't implement. Menu navigation. Oh, and I also guess I didn't do serialization. Oh, whatever, who cares? Like, you're gonna play this game once, at most, okay? <clears throat> Anyways, to make Cablebox support menu navigation, I would have to create my own event system, but that's a can of worms I couldn't be bothered to take care of at that time. Overroasted. Now with gamepad support. Except for the menu. Speaking of the menu, I've messaged my artist friend and he told me that he doesn't care, just make a menu. So I sent him this. This is how the menu turned out in the end, and it definitely wasn't caused by a custom scene manager that was a little bit wonky with loading skyboxes. After way too much time, the game was done. But this is where I faced a problem. WebGL. This sad piece of garbage allows developers to make their games run in a browser. However, WebGL sucks. It's slow, it's ugly, it doesn't support certain features, and... 
it doesn't support DLLs. For those that don't know, DLLs are compiled libraries that can be written in any language and used with, but not limited to Unity. Most developers will probably never have to use them. However, this game was using X-Input for reading gamepads. X-Input is written in C++. Yeah, I think you can see the problem. Luckily, I've also added support for UIM gamepads. And UIM stands for Unity Input Manager. I call it UIM because you can get confused really quickly if you don't do that. By the way, shout out to Unity for naming their two input solutions Input System and Input Manager. Doesn't get more creative than that, does it? UIM sucks, but the single good thing about it is that you can compile it to WebGL without any issues. If you think I'm over-exaggerating, this is called Y in X input. Well, UIM instead decided to call it Joystick Button 3. And what's even better, that changes depending on your platform. I wish I was making this up. So yeah, you can now use gamepads in the browser, but now I cannot sleep because I know that it uses UIM. Speaking of the devil... Okay, so my gamepads have been with me almost all of my life, so they drift a little. However, I didn't have a problem with them when I was using X-Input, but both of those providers have the same dead zone, so I'm suspecting that X-Input has an additional one on top of my own, and I have no idea how to disable it. So, conclusion. Should you make your own input system? No! Just learn UIS, it's, it's easier, okay? Trust me. And UIS being the new Unity input system that isn't trash. If you'd like to use my input system, then you'll have to wait. Currently it's a part of my library QASIC, although I am considering releasing it standalone because it's actually quite good compared to UIS because you can actually understand what's displaying on your screen. Just saying! So if you would like to see that then let me know because I really don't want to do that. <laughs> it takes a really long time to get everything set up and then waiting a bunch of time for Unity to review your assets and it's a mess. But if you want to then just let me know. Okay? Okay. But for now that's it for today. I'm gonna go back working on this garbage. I really hope I will be able to release a devlog in a month or so. So, so yeah, bye, goodbye, go away, bye bye, go, go, disappear, bye bye.